what up y'all it's your boy the one and only a switch aka the 70 time reigning preluding social distance champion aka motherfucker with the drake eyebrows aka um Walmart Drake <laughs> bringing you yet another episode of Switch of Sites uh, 58 to be exact today's date is um, June 5th 2020 proud of myself I didn't mess up that time uh, also excuse my mic because uh, normally I would have it positioned where at least it's not in the camera as much but uh my mic is getting a little, getting a little, uh, getting a little flat, <laughs> get a little, just get a little limp, you know, just, I don't know why, but just, uh, just tired, you know, it's, it's just tired, you know, just, just, it's just tired. Okay. Don't blame my mic for that. So you get what you pay for. Cause, uh, it's a pretty cheap stand. All I have to do is just get this adapter replaced and I should be good, but yeah, apologies, but the show must go on. Uh, also in regards to, uh, at least my normally scheduled time, uh, which normally is Thursday, uh, you know, out of respect of, uh, George Floyd felt it was only right to, uh, you know, postpone, uh, recording the show. Uh, until that time, um, yeah, man, still hitting home very much. So, um, it's real, it's really real. Uh, at least in terms, just, I mean, I've mainly talked about said my piece in terms of the whole situation and what it means and all that, at least uh, a lot during the last episode, but I de definitely do feel it's still important to, you know, still bring more recognition to, you know, like a dude, uh, a black man was like innocently killed, uh, due to police, police brutality, um, which is messed up. And it's the sad part is that, yeah, it's like, you know, I think a lot of us were repressing the thought in our heads and like, you know, be uh next time or, you know, just like, Oh, well, eh, uh, it just happens. It's, it's really, what can we do about it? But, you know, people have stood up to it, uh, been vocal in various forms, which has helped just as much, if not, if not, uh, you know, uh, more so in some aspects, uh, in terms of, you know, interesting changes across everything now. Like I guess the most recent, at least that comes to my mind is, uh, call of duty, uh, specifically, which is <laughs> if you've, if you played call of duty back in the, uh, back in the 360, uh, yeah, 360 days, you know, it's, uh, just a, I guess I could, I guess you can kind of put Xbox, multiplayer in that same umbrella of just a cesspool of racist people in comments. Um, and boy, uh, at least specifically, I, which is actually relevant in this game and space, a lot of, uh, a lot of fuel for a lot of racist gamers to be, uh, mad about, uh, specifically, uh, I guess in particular, uh, which I guess we'll talk about more into this show, uh, the PS five being delayed, uh, due to, um, you know, the events of, uh, George Floyd and, and whatnot. Um, but also on top of that, uh, modern warfare specifically is, uh, they, did, they went on, I think they went offline for a particular period or am I getting that mixed up with grand theft auto? I think grand theft auto went offline for a period of time, I think two hours or so just to bring a attention to the issue with, uh, George Floyd and poli police brutality against, uh, 
people of all all races and creeds really but i mean obviously mainly black people that's pretty much the common denominator unfortunately but it is what it is so yeah red dead online and rockstar were both uh offline for two hours to bring attention to it i think uh nickelodeon and cartoon network they um had a message like a I think the time that uh you know George Floyd was uh basically asphyxiated um they showed kind of the the realness and um you know just the message of police brutality and racism specifically which is unfortunate a lot of people didn't like but I mean at the same time I mean what do you what do you expect so there was that and then going back to call of duty yeah they um made a statement on twitter you know basically saying that they are with black lives matter movement and, and things like that uh but boy yeah i did i didn't i didn't look too much in the comments but i kind of knew what to expect um you know which is unfortunate but hey this is this great that uh it took this this whole moment and movement to bring this to attention to a lot of people, which I definitely think is, um, warranted for sure. Um, it, it's kind of unfortunate that now of all times it's like, it's like, Oh, now we should listen when, you know, there, there has been multiple scenarios where that's happened before, but Hey, now is better than never, you know? So, um, and then going back to, modern warfare in terms of the uh messaging they also give you uh like in terms of the news uh area or page when you open up the game uh they basically have the statement for black lives matter um that they're with with the movement as well as uh the um i noticed the pictures as well in terms of the options where you can pick a co-op and multiplayer you can also um, it, it also shows black in terms of the screens where otherwise would show like the people in various random backgrounds as well. So on top of that, they also implemented, um, what was it? Um, stronger countermeasures for banning and, you know, uh, reporting, uh, people that of obviously, especially with this, you are obviously going to see a huge influx of people being racist, racist tags and stuff that I've been seeing and things like that. So, um, it's definitely a good step. Uh, definitely could have been way sooner, but Hey, um, now is better than ever. So, um, I think that really covered at least just the, I don't know, impact of, uh, you know, this whole scenario that's went down, uh, which is good. It's good to see a lot of people stepping up. Also seeing a lot of people being real quiet. Uh, but you know, Hey, that's, it is what it is, unfortunately, but you know, you know, especially people with a much bigger platform to kind of bring more attention and awareness to this issue. But for whatever reason, one or another, nothing to say crickets. So all in all, uh, definitely rest in peace, George Floyd. Um, yeah, man, it's unfortunate. It's it's, and you can, at least for me personally, I could solely put myself in his shoes, just being an innocent black person, um, trying to abide by the law and even then getting straight up killed and it's this trauma traumatizing man it really is honestly i haven't really been it's affected me a good amount at least uh most of this week if i want if i if i want to be candid about it um it's real man it's real just treat people better man treat people better that's all I can really say. Messed up really is also obviously, you know, justice for a lot of other people that are in the same, we're in the same boat 
that luckily for 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 having some video evidence uh can't even can't even fathom the people that haven't even didn't have the kind of luck of well you know somewhat luck of having the whole scenario recorded um having documented you know evidence where you know there's definitely a lot of people that don't even have that in the same exact scenario killed in cold blood and and the people that killed him are scot-free you know which is yeah just that thought as well just uh that, that starts to get under under my skin at least in particular definitely needs to be a change man really does really really does yeah man it's this depressing <laughs> just to be real honest with y'all depressing on top of covid and then even on top of that with the covid uh african americans are the most likely to die you know based off of some somewhat apparent reasons uh in terms of just our health and medical conditions um but you know just likely we don't have uh health insurance and you know other very uh variables like that which is uh the adversity is is strong against us in that that respect just messed up really is some very weird scary horrible depressing times we're in but hopefully at least for me personally uh video games are my escape to kind of you know get my mind off of the harsh reality that is the world nowadays so um yeah i think on that note um yeah let's stop the dilly dallying and, and, and get into it um so the first topic of discussion uh like i talked about a little bit before uh in terms of the ps5 event technically that was supposed to happen this week but obviously due to uh which is very smart on their end because that would have been would have been very suggestive as to you know um some form of de- attempting to detract from this horrible event um from happening but uh yeah so they did they did the right thing um who made that call who knows but hey it was made which is i think the most important aspect um and i guess i'll quote it specifically we have uh decided to postpone the playstation 5 event scheduled for june 4th while we understand gamers worldwide are excited to see ps5 games we do not feel that right now is the time for celebration and for now we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard really good statement really good statement in terms of uh you know doing the right thing doing the right thing and uh boy oh boy (laughs) Uh, yeah, the comments just straight vitriol. Uh, at least weeding weeding the uh, races out for sure. So, if anything, is definitely a great aspect in in that that I guess realm where you know it's really showing people's true colors, who they actually are. Kind of like what's that one movie? I forgot what it's called. Damn it! It's the one movie where uh. I think it's uh not not dead alive. That's a whole different movie, but it's uh I think it I think it's the same movie with the dude um no, I think that's Predator. I'm thinking of the dude um Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger uh doing the <laughs> classic interracial uh bring it in, buddy. All right. Let's do this. Uh but I think that's a different movie. What was it called? Ah, uh, damn it. Now nah, it's going to drive me crazy. Um, darn it. Uh, 90s action movie with 
aliens in disguise. That's going to do it. Google knows. Google knows everything. Uh, they live. That's what I was thinking of. They live. Okay. They live. I'm pretty sure that's the movie. I'm yeah, man. That's it's bringing a lot of tension. I'm like, man, I really need to watch a lot more movies. Um, just specifically from a pop culture reference standpoint, which is maybe kind of sad in in a particular aspect where it's like, I should be just watching movies to watch movies, but honestly, just out of pure curiosity of the pop culture influences, uh, that's normally my main reason of watching some of these movies, like at least off the top of my head, uh, probably alien predator. They live now, uh, heat, heat. I've watched Scarface, so I can at least say I, I did, uh, get cross that off the list. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do like one fell swoop of like just straight up marathon of catching up with some of these movies, but either way. Um, yeah, man, unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. Then, you know, all, uh, I don't want to get into it, but you know, it's, it's pretty apparent what's good and bad in this scenario. Um, hopefully people know that, that racism is bad. And then, you know, the people detracted from the movement, like all lives matter. And then, you know, the pretty popular, obvious, uh, analogy, you know, that's been spread around everywhere at this point, I believe is, you know, (laughs) uh, all houses matter, of course, obviously, but if a set of houses is, is this house is burning and this one is particularly just fine. Does do all houses matter at that moment? You know what I mean? Obviously the house that's on fire needs to be extinguished, right? So let's extinguish the house that's on fire, AKA black innocent people getting killed by police, being able to be protected by, uh, the supposed law or justice when there was any, there wasn't any, you know, predicament to be made or, you know, created, if that makes sense. Ugh, I just, I'll never understand that. I get it at, at, at some instance, but it's like, ah, it's so belittling and just demeaning and just, uh, dismissive of what the whole purpose of this is just don't kill black people innocently for no apparent reason. Uh, it's uh it's disheartening, man. Either anyway. Um, yeah, so good stuff. Sony for doing that. Uh, there hasn't really been any other date. I presume like maybe a week or two from now, uh, will probably make the most sense. But who knows? Of course, obviously, I like to see the PlayStation five announcement and all that. But obviously, this is a huge, bigger issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, So and it was all but uh, justified for PlayStation to do that. And, you know, for the people, uh, what does this have to do with 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 uh, with police brutality? What does that do? Racism, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, really? But I digress. I digress. I digress very much. So, uh, in line with that, uh, some rumors have been actually coming out, popping up in terms of, um, in particular bloodborne and, uh, demon souls, uh, possibly potentially coming out on PC. And at least what's kind of interpreted possibly some like PS4 to PS5 upgrade or uh, maybe like a kind of maybe something along the lines of uh, Xbox uh, One X in terms of being able to natively 
uh, upgrade the game. I doubt that, I guess. I mean, that's something we, I guess we don't know yet since PlayStation has been so coy and like ambiguous and vague about, um, I guess in particular, those aspects of backwards compatibility, like at least currently all, all that we know is that like games that have been, I believe released this year are guaranteed to work on the PS five, but then that leaves like the whole <laughs> backlog and library of PlayStation games up until then. What about those games? And I guess it, it seems to be insinuated that maybe just like kind of in the same uh, realm as a uh, Xbox where it'd be just the games that actually, actually um, are being, have a lot of interest or are maybe burdened with a lot of licensing and uh, well, I guess, yeah, mainly licensing issues of some sort um, would be most likely to be natively ported over to PS5. It, consider what that may look like since we don't know. So very weird, very weird. But uh, I mean, if anything, Bloodborne on PC, that would be a, that'd be a sight to behold. I would, I would definitely double dip in that, um, PS five as well. I mean, obviously, of course, um, very curious to see if this actually becomes true. Uh, so it was a couple of people somewhat semi confirming it. Uh, of course the man, the myth, the unknown legend, Wario 64, uh, giving you them good gaming deals left and right. Uh, in regards to his tweet regarding PlayStation now, uh, which you could technically play Bulletborn on PC, but not in the most ideal way. Um, so you could play Bulletborn on PC with PS now or wait a little longer. So I was like, what do you know, Wario 64? What do you know that you you're not telling us specifically? Um, and then another individual who I believe is pretty credible in terms of his uh, sources or supposed sources. Uh, Slothborn on Twitter basically said uh, this started as a shit post to get some attention for charities and bail funds. But haha, ha, wow. Uh, next, uh, next tweet specifically um, going towards that. Uh, for those just, just joining me, yes, Bloodborne will with uh asterisk uh be coming to pc not that's a little weird but all right uh, i've had it confirmed by a very trusted source and i have a loss have a lot of faith in the company who's doing the port you won't be disappointed it's genuine genuinely is happening oh. i'm not sure I'm not sure but i mean if anybody it would kind of point towards blue point Blue point, right? I think blue point, pretty sure blue point, um, games that made shadow of the Colossus remake and what else? I think they've also made the, the dark souls remaster. If I'm not, if I'm, if I'm correct, but it would, uh, yeah, make a lot of sense. I mean, I guess. Is it going to be both Bloodborne and Demon Souls, or maybe they're just going to announce them both and then maybe spread the releases out? Yeah, it could be both. At least what, what's being insinuated could potentially be both. Um, but I mean, obviously, I think the, the higher, hmm, it may be somewhat equal, but I think people want Bloodborne a bit more. I guess maybe because we already got kind of that in dark souls already in the dark Souls series, but obviously it definitely would be great to, um, go to both for sure. So who knows, but interesting, uh, speculation, rumor mill stuff, which I like, uh, personally, I, I try to, I try to use, uh, or at least include stuff to talk about on the show in regards to, you know, rumor stuff, I keep it within the realm of, you know, not just straight absurd, bogus stuff, but at least stuff that has 
some vetted sources that aren't necessarily, you know, um, at least trying to be completely false. So just a disclaimer on that, I guess, since I know I barely, uh, it, it varies show to show or episode to episode, but just want to clear that, get that out the, uh, out the way. So keeping in line with uh PlayStation, uh, news rumors, if you will, uh, I guess te- technically both in a sense, um, some maybe I guess more feasible in terms of uh, Hideo Kojima in regards to, I guess, postmortem in terms of, uh, death stranding, uh, there was an interview. Uh, in regards to uh, news at livedoor.com. Uh, this was all in Japanese, but was translated uh, via uh, the error that resets. Um, and uh, it was a couple of interesting uh, tidbits from that that I at least want to kind of sift through. I guess the first aspect, which I think a lot of people are curious about, uh, is the sales of Death Stranding. Like, how did, how did the game do? Uh, from a sales standpoint, because, you know, obviously uh, a game could be critically just ripped, but then if it sells, well, obviously that's a kind of what matters the most. Uh, I think it varies from game to game, but essentially we critic reviews and critic reviews and sales do come together to, you know, formulate like reception overall, I, I would assume. I mean, <laughs> if, a, if a game was very like reviewed horribly, but sells like crazy, um, it would be kind of dumb for game companies to not to ignore that completely. And, you know, uh, well, uh, let's move on to another project. Uh, it does not make sense at all. So uh, apparently it exceeded uh quote, it exceeded the profitable line at all. Some of the Japanese is broken here, but I'm pretty sure it meant it exceeded the profitable line. Yeah, it just exceeded the profitable line. Uh, so I can say success, including the collecting of development costs, will be released in the PC version as well. Don't worry, we have enough profit to be ready for the next title. So it seems like it was just good enough maybe potentially didn't like surpass expectations uh, or predictions um, in terms of sales, but did good enough that all is good. So that's good. I mean, considering my differences in uh, feelings about Death Strand in which, you know, at least still reflecting back on it. Uh, yeah, I can only summarize it as a good one time experience. It's not a game I feel like I'd want to go back to just to play again, all over again, especially. No, no, Um, it was fine. It was fine. Not Kojima's best work, but it was uh, it was it was legitimate. It was fine. So it's good, if anything, that, you know, he does get another opportunity to maybe expand on Death Stranding maybe make it more action oriented or a better blend of both, which is one of my gripes with the game that, uh, I mean, I understood the intention, but at the same time, I would have liked at least a little bit of a little bit of, um, metal gear, not, not necessarily vibes, but just action, I guess that's really it. I don't know, you know, just having a better blend of that, both of them. I mean, obviously there is a fair, reasonable amount, but not enough to, you know, mix things up or make it as interesting as I wanted it to be. And then the whole thing with the BTs, where it's like, uh, they just felt more annoying than like, I guess, interesting, but you know, not to go into another re-review again, but you know, I guess maybe just to provide some context in terms of maybe what other people felt about the game. I know it, it, I think it generally was very divisive after everything was said and done. 
like a lot of people really loved it and a lot of people really hated it but i think i was like one of the very few that was kind of uh on the more side didn't like it but kind of more more so on the mediocre end of it where it's like it's not a horrible game but it's not the best game i just felt like it was pretty much in the middle ish <laughs> so yeah but then uh in regards to the next title um quote i can't talk because it's in the planning stage but i'm working under the surface just recently a big project fell through and it gets in my hair laughs uh well as is often the case in this industry so i think that uh definitely led a lot of us to speculate what could have that what could that title have been um that was you know ambiguous and uh mysterious or a project that was uh potentially about to happen but fell through completely um so i think a lot of us were suspecting that maybe it was lining up with the rumor that silent hills uh was actually coming back and like playstation somehow was gonna get uh konami and kojima to kind of uh mend their their severed ties and actually get that project back off uh of cancellation or you know purgatory but apparently that's definitely not the case so that's kind of ruled out uh since he was asked that specifically um, the other day it was rumored to buy the copyright of Metal Gear Solid and PT. And then he said, oh, it's a false rumor. At least I have never, I've never listened at all. Laugh. So kind of killed any, any cool, interesting speculation. But at the same time, I mean, Kojima is known for trolling and, you know, um, now that I think about it really playing with our expectations a lot. I think he straight up lied when asked about something like very yes or no. Um, yeah, I think it was maybe the something regarding the next metal gear way back. Or it might've been that whole kerfuffle with uh, metal gear solid two, where he was hyping everything up for, you know, uh, solid snake to be the, you know, main character. Uh, throughout the whole game when obviously that didn't end up being the case, but I think it was, it might've been something of that, that, uh, area I forgot though, but something like that. So I'm saying, I don't know, you could kind of still maybe take it with a grain of salt, but then I don't know, maybe I might be the guy to like, so you're telling me there's a chance, <laughs> but Hey, uh, I'm one for keeping that hope alive keeping that dream going, uh, optimism, optimist over here, but Hey, maybe that's just me, but it seems like it would be something. I mean, you know, seems like it. Um, so also, uh, I guess kind of switching gears to <laughs> the opposing competitor to PlayStation in terms of that, um, in regards to this very interesting well i guess yeah it just leads to a lot of speculation but uh from gamatsu there was a rumor or uh apparently this japanese tech journalist uh was teasing specifically that he has a huge scoop on the level of uh wired's ps5 article where basically uh wire got exclusive coverage and information on the ps5 before anybody uh, else got to do that, or I guess exclusively to them, they only got to do that. But, um, apparently it's on that level of scoopness. So yeah, yeah. Then they mention. I think that's what, what got everybody very like in a, in a straight, like just, just <laughs> wildfire was, uh, that it's Sega related. So basically, and I think they mentioned Microsoft being, um, yeah, I think it was 
something with Microsoft as well. So they had Microsoft mentioned it as well as Seika. So it's like people were instantly thinking like, okay, so it's gotta be some, it's either gotta be like a crossover or, uh, I think a lot of people were thinking that maybe Microsoft bought Sega or, um, one legitimate speculation is that, um, for Japan where, you know, Microsoft definitely has a lot of trouble or, you know, obviously from past history has had a lot of trouble, uh, getting a decent amount of sales in Japan overseas in the West. Um, in the West, in Japan, you know what I mean? Uh, basically getting a lot of sales compared to, you know, the U S. Um, so people were thinking that maybe Sega would rebrand themselves as, uh, well, Xbox will rebrand themselves as Sega in order to, uh, be more appealing and get more sales in, um, yeah. Would it be the West? No overseas. Asia, mainly Japan, really, I guess that was, that was a focus really mainly Japan, Asia, uh, to get more sales. Since obviously I guess mainly with the omen of X and Xbox, um, in Japan culture, X is very, um, I guess taboo or just negative see negatively, uh, in their eyes and in, in culture. So they majority of them tend to stray away from it based off that, um, you know, in terms of the consistent iconography, I would assume in terms of like, you know, their branding and publishing and stuff like that, marketing, um, where, you know, PlayStation is very subtle. Uh, I mean, the only thing you got is X on the button, but you know, X is, is just understandable. It's like X is to them is, is back, but to us is confirm. So, you know, interesting stuff like that, but that's what led a lot of people to speculate that maybe they're somehow rebranding the Xbox series X to be like the Sega series X. So it could appeal to more people of uh Japanese descent in Japan, which is kind of redundant, but you know what I mean? Okay. So, but basically all that's kind of squashed. Um, I had a theory too. I I think I had a theory. Well, yeah, people obviously went to this, uh, the conclusion that, Oh, it's gotta be dreamcast Two. dreamcast two is coming back or something like that. But highly doubted that as well. But apparently the most likely thing, uh, now, um, actually it was confirmed to be the big, that big scoop. Everybody was kind of rumoring and speculating about, uh, from fog gaming is that basically, um, Sega is going to have this cloud gaming service for arcades, which is definitely big in Japan. So it makes sense. So basically it lets from what I got here, it will let arcade machines utilize their CPU and GPU after an arcade is actually closed physically to be utilized from a remote location. And, you know, obviously with Microsoft and their huge cloud gaming, um, server set up with, uh, Azure, um, well, I guess maybe, yeah, I think that specifically, since that's the same services being used for, um, streaming games to Xbox and, and their, uh, beta program right now to try to incorporate streaming and stuff like that. So, I mean, it seems to be pretty apparent that that's what they're going to be using as their source for servers and stuff like that to stream, uh, two devices. So, uh, I, yeah, it wasn't anything I actually saw coming, but you know, in retrospect, it does make a ton of sense now considering how, how huge arcades are still in Japan, definitely compared to, uh, the U S where it's a, yeah, ba basically very, very rare. Uh, not necessarily rare, but I mean, you know, they, we got like around ones out here in LA and stuff like that, but, um, not as popular as it used to be back in the earlier days. Um, so yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I'm very curious to see how accessible it will be to like, let's say us in the U S in particular, which I uh, maybe without 
it won't I don't think it'll be accessible to us without, you know, any kind of a uh, loopholing and uh trickery like um VPNs and stuff, but then again, that might be like super laggy uh trying to utilize whatever arcade games over that, but nonetheless, it seems pretty damn awesome and uh I definitely like the what what this insinuates as to what, you know, gaming can go towards. I mean, obviously we're aware that at some point, maybe decades, centuries from now, gaming will be, you know, fully stream streamed everywhere, anywhere. Um, but maybe being able to access these arcade games where you maybe can't access anywhere else, like in any other games or physical media, um, would be pretty cool. Or maybe even older arcade games that are, you know, generally like a bitch to like emulate and stuff on emulators would be actually pretty cool if, uh, if that actually comes to be so who knows, but, uh, yeah, some of these keywords, uh, definitely, definitely want to press the doubt button. Uh, if, <laughs> if we play in LA noir right now, <laughs> I saw, I, uh, saw this one uh, documentary with this, um, this YouTube channel, I think. I forgot how they're pronounced, but it's, it's gamers, but with the a upside down, but it's, so it's, they technically spell it like game giver giver <laughs> or gamers with a V I guess instead of a, a, but they did pretty dope, uh, documentary on, um, LA noir. So excuse me if I have LA noir in my head, but you know, I do doubt this. I doubt it a lot. So just, the kind of check on these features according to the Twitter. Um, yes, fall gaming is a scoop. Sega will use arcades in Japan as the technical backbone. The CPUs and GPUs housed in arcade machines are mentioned specifically. Ultra low latency is touted. Commercial idea is to use arcades outside business hours. So definitely all for it. Um, accessibility is a great thing. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like you play an arcade game and you have to close up and you just run home and you like, ah, I really want to play that. Or, you know, I definitely understand that, that like desire, like whenever I play some cool arcade games that I still want to play or play again. Uh, yeah, just the thought that being able to play an arcade game that you actually want to continue playing, uh, seems pretty dope, pretty awesome. If it, if everything, you know, fully delivers on the, the promises that they're saying. So I, I respect it. I respect it. And outside of that, and you know, obvious racism and, uh, people getting killed and hurt by the police. Um, it's been all the, I think that's the news for this week. At least that's out to me. So I guess we'll talk about what I've been playing. Uh, I guess first, <laughs> first foremost, of course, the, the warfare is always modern and it never stops. Uh, so was it this week? I believe I, uh, yeah, I managed to, uh, rank up or get my max rank in terms of, uh, my season pass and uh level i think i got my level first and then fully completed the season pass took advantage of the double xp this past weekend and um got what i needed there specifically so same old same old um and oh yeah i guess that's one aspect i forgot about call of duty as well that they also are postponing the uh season four update which was supposed to drop this past tuesday as well but uh, based off of the current events as well, they um, decided to postpone that also, which, you know, <laughs> that on top of the Black Lives Matter messaging and, uh, you know, the ban uh, tools, man, if you were racist and playing Call of Duty, <laughs> you, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> you, you, you're in, you're in for a treat this week. So, but uh Again, good on, uh, Activision. Well, more so infinity war Activision. I don't, um, um, I don't know. I can at least 
for Infinity Ward, you get a little slack, but Activision with the whole China banning and, you know, suppressing and stuff, uh, you, you aren't off the hook that much, but I'd have to give a little bit more credit to Infinity Ward specifically. So, but yeah, then, uh, I finally, finally finished Gears Tactics, man. And yeah, after beating it, um, yeah, yeah, the game game has a lot of issues, not a lot, but just a lot of issues from making it enjoyable. I'd say, uh, just a lot of just unnecessary hurdles and artificial lengthening, uh, that just detracted a lot from the game in my opinion. Um, yeah, just as an overall summary, just the bosses are too long. Um, they could have been knocked down a bit. I guess technically if you're, you p- play the game again with a buffed up characters, it might be, you know, more, much faster, but I mean, most people are only going to play this once. So yeah, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. Cutting out a lot of the fat specifically with just artificial, uh, side missions that are mandatory for you in order to progress, which I haven't never really seen um at least specifically especially in a tactics game strategy game i i don't really recall at least the games i played i guess really my my best reference is fire emblem but um games that let you um skip optional stuff um just doesn't make sense you should be able to skip optional missions if you just really want to just direct path it uh not in the mood of playing the same mission type again uh and then on top of that you have to play like three three like side missions in order to progress to the main story mission which is just yeah that just that just didn't really sit right with me personally i just like side missions to be that side missions giving me the option to play it if i want and if I'm tired of the format, which is, it seemed like every game type was the exact same cookie cutter template. Like basically there's one where you have to get to the end of the level and collect the cases before the nemesis, uh, come down and do damage to each area of range. And then that expands more. There's one where you basically save, save these people. And you only spawn the map as two people to save the others that are locked in, a uh, uh, incubation chamber or something like that. And then there's one that like, uh, defend these two areas for a uh, certain number of turns. And if you don't do that, then you fail. Uh, yeah, that, that was, that was probably one of my bigger gripes is that, yeah, it's just artificial. Just let me skip it. If I don't want to play it, I don't know. That's that got under my skin a lot, uh, as you could, as you could tell, but Outside of that, if really, if they just, if they just made side missions optional and, you know, obviously understandable that, you know, enemies are going to be harder, but give me the option to do that. Give me the option to not play, uh, play on a, I guess, you know, under level people and deal with the ramifications of that. And then like, you know, okay, maybe I have to do one side mission, uh, compared to like three, you know, Ugh, such a missed opportunity, but, um, yeah, if they just cut, just let side missions be optional and, uh, yeah, definitely get rid of the serious bugs that game has. Uh, fortunately I only ran across two, three, but they, I think just the, how detrimental to my progress they were is what really got, got to me. Cause they like put you back so damn far, which, uh, really, really, uh, <laughs> another aspect they got under my skin. But outside of that, I guess those are really only the only gripes I really had with gears tactics. Yeah, those are really the only ones. I mean, the the strategy felt good, the um the combat felt good. Uh yeah, just the fulfillment of making the right decisions and also dealing with the ramifications of not making the 
not making the right decisions all felt like a strategy game that I would want to play, especially with the gears uh, spin on it, which is, you know, one of my favorite series of all time. Um, yeah, all that. And also incorporating those aspects of gears that I like in terms of headshot sounds and uh, chainsaw melee attacks and uh, things like that. So, I mean, a very minor uh, nitpick is um, I wish you could revert a revert a uh, decision you made um, that you didn't mean to. And I'm not even talking about like, let's say you do an action and you do it. I get that. Okay. I, I, I maybe hit the mouse button on accident. Okay. Sure. It was fine. I didn't mean to do it, but okay. But something like in particular moving, uh, you know, in a lot of strategy games, at least the ones I played, you at least get the option to move somewhere and maybe get an idea what it feels like. And then maybe if you're, you maybe have second thoughts after, you know, kind of almost committed to that, you can kind of revert back. But I feel like this game, you didn't really, you didn't really get that. It's like, it's like, Hey, you make this decision and you have to deal with it, live with it. Maybe that's something that they were intentionally trying to instill with the, I guess, philosophy of that game. But it would have been cool if you, for, for decisions that make sense, you could kind of go back on it. If it wasn't like fully, uh, fully committed decision, like something as simple as just moving to a particular space. I would have liked that if you were able to kind of reverse that. So, but outside of that, I mean, the cut scenes are really good. Graphics are really excellent. Um, yeah, all of that is really damn good to be honest. Even the story was good to a, to a particular extent, but yeah, just the whole, uh, side mission thing really kind of ruined it. Um, in my opinion, but, um, yeah, I'd say if you are a Gears fan, it's definitely worth uh, checking out, seeing if you like it. Um, just with those minor gripes aside, if it just they just cut the fat in terms of at least making the side missions optional, uh, that game would have been way more, way more enjoyable, I feel, than uh, what it is. But you know, this also is coming from somebody who doesn't really play too many strategy games, so. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not accustomed to it, but I mean, you know, my best reference is, is fire emblem. Um, so, you know, Hey, but, um, yeah. So that's gears tactics in a nutshell, uh, pretty cool, uh, in terms, you know, backstory, uh, lore with gears and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I'd say, yeah, if you are a gears fan, definitely worth checking out. I, I'd say even if you are, even if you're a strategy fan, it's worth checking out. If maybe you're not a fully, fully hardcore strategy fan, like maybe myself, um, it's still worth checking out. It's kind of a, I don't know, maybe in my head, I always think strategy games are way more complicated than they are. But I mean, I think there are tiers now that I think about it. Cause like, I think on the lower end, I feel like, you know, fire emblem, uh, advance wars, What's another one? I haven't played XCOM, so I can't really legitimately say anything about that, but I would assume that's kind of the same umbrella, but for more complicated, I feel like at least my brother has a reference like, um, command and conquer, uh, civilization. Uh, what else? I think anno 18. Stuff like that, I think, are the more complicated, deep, intricate strategy games. So, yeah, I guess it, it depends your interpretation of it. But either way, I think it's definitely a great light strategy game that I think a lot of people will enjoy um, with keeping those uh, downsides in, uh, in consideration. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something else in particular. Oh yeah, so it is only on PC, which is a understandable choice considering it's a tactics game. But at least I was playing it a couple, a couple times with controller, and it was pretty, it was pretty close to the keep mouse keyboard experience. Obviously, you know, with the, some of the downsides like not being able to directly, 
navigate to some areas and rotate and stuff, but I think they translated the controls to a uh, controller pretty good. Um, I think it's coming out to Xbox a bit later. Um, but Hey, definitely worth checking out on game pass. So, uh, yeah, I say it's worth it. If, if <laughs> big, if, if you like, if you're a fan of gears of war, um, then next, uh, I've I actually been kind of dabbling here and there, but I, I forgot to talk about it. But uh, Animal Crossing, I actually have start diving in. Uh, I haven't really been too deep into the game. Like I'd say at the most, maybe three hours. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, I'm an Animal Crossing noob. I feel like I don't. It's probably the community probably made some term for that. I don't know, but. I still don't really get a good grasp of the game, if that makes sense, in terms of the loop, the game loop. I think I still have a lot of um, initial stuff to do still. It doesn't feel like it because it feels like I have a lot of freedom, but uh, I think I still have some stuff to do before getting into that consistent loop of at least what I assume is a loop. For Animal Crossing, because at least from what I'm hearing, like through osmosis, through a lot of other people playing, it's like you check for bells and, you know, do whatever you need to to get bells. And that's it. I don't I don't know. I don't know. That's at least my initial <laughs> initial impression. But. I don't know. Uh, overall, I mean, from what I played, it's very charming, and you know, appealing and interesting. I can definitely see the hooks getting into me if I do devote some time to it. Who knows? I may, I may uh, dabble in it this weekend, but I don't know. I don't know. That's at least <laughs> in three hours I played my impression. I made my state, my city, my island, Zootopia, a reference of a <laughs> funny reference back in college where uh, I forgot it was some, um, it was some culture class. I think it's like something culture or basically you get a better understanding of each other's cultures or uh, di uh, different cultures and things like that. I think that was the general general like focus of that class. I forgot what it's called um, verbatim, but that was the gist of it. And uh, we had this one project where basically you make your own, I think, state and how you would govern it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, one aspect was uh, in terms of naming it, I was like, yeah, what do we want to name? I was like, uh, I think we collectively came up with it, um, Zootopia. So <laughs> I don't know, it just stuck with me. I'm like, oh, it's an island. Sure, yeah, Zootopia. So you guys would never <laughs> benefit from that, but whatever. Thought it was a funny little tidbit to talk about. Um, next, uh, boy. So, uh, out of nowhere, at least when we initially heard about it, MK Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. So I did actually get to play it and beat it. Uh, for those that don't know, basically MK Aftermath is basically like this super overhaul of upgrades. It seems like, uh, to Mortal Kombat. So basically it comes with a whole new campaign as well as a whole new a couple of aspects to the, I guess, general game overall with, um, balance fixes, uh, for, you know, all the characters, uh, friendships are in the game. Um, stage fall st stage fallities, stage fatalities. Um, what else? Oh yeah. A couple, three new DLC characters or, yeah, I guess technically they're DLC characters because this is DLC. Um, Shiva from Mortal Kombat 3. And I think she came, showed up in some of the other later ones. Uh, Robocop, of course. Um, and Fujin. I think he premiered in Mortal Kombat 4. And I think he, you know, popped up in a couple other ones. But yeah, so... I played the uh, campaign. So basically it's a straight up legit campaign that does go pick up where 
uh the original story left off um it was cool it was cool i liked it i enjoyed it um if i don't know now that i'm reflecting on it it felt like what's the word it felt like um i guess after everything was said and done it just felt like a DLC, I guess that's that's pretty much what I want to say. It, it felt like DLC, but you know, it, it it definitely had the same sentiments that you know and love from the original story. A lot of the cool action, choreography um, was on point. The story beats. Uh, it, it definitely felt like a straight up MK movie, like kind of like the the classic ones, which does actually make sense now because uh, Shane Sung, he's actually a big role in this DLC and he's actually the actor that was in the original movie of Mortal Kombat. So it's like, it's weird. It's like meta and full circle at the same time. So, um, yeah, but yeah, all in all, it basically gave a chance to shine a light on pretty much all the new DLC characters of the game. Um, a lot of the p- folks that came before, um, before this, uh, in terms of the DLC characters, definitely get, get their, uh, time to shine, uh, which, yeah, basically that's kind of what it felt like. Just basically, uh, a mechanism to, uh, give all the DLC characters that are already released, uh, their time to shine story-wise, uh, one way or another. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'd say it definitely, was pretty cool. It felt, felt good. Uh, yeah, it felt like a legitimate continuation of the original story. And, uh, yeah, man, definitely. It, it basically did nothing to like, um, add to the story. If that makes sense at the same time, cause basically it's like, it just felt like an excuse to, without spoiling anything, it just felt like an excuse to get all the DLC characters in the story, but then go right back to where the first one left off. Essentially it felt like, which is fine. It's just in terms of a expectation standpoint, just know that's what's kind of expected for that, you know? So, but uh on top of that i did also just <laughs> dabble with the multiplayer well, not even the multiplayer i can't even, can't even say that legitimately um just i just spoiled myself on the fatalities and um the fatalities and the uh friendships so i just straight up legitimately um and i guess this is a somewhat of a pro tip probably everybody knows this but it was news to me, so I thought I'd share it, but basically if you go to fatality practice, you can actually do, um, you can do the stage fatalities as well as friendships, which I think the condition for friendships and going all the way back to like, uh, I forgot where they, I think Mortal Kombat two, where the conditions is are specific, where I think on the second the last second, the last round, you can't block and you know, you have to beat the opponent by not blocking. And that is the exact same. I'm pretty sure it's the same stipulation in order to even do a friendship as well in this one. Um, but just doing a fatality practice, you can just do a showcase of all the friendships that way, which is pretty awesome instead of, you know, kind of an old school way of having to, you know, just play a game and, you know, uh, kill the person and then just hope you get it right. And if you don't, then damn it, I got to do it again. And then that's, that's the thing too. Like you can also make the timer infinite so you can, you have a lot of time to figure it out. And if you don't get it right, you can keep doing it unless you hit the person where you can just simply reload it uh, again, which is thank you. Nether realm for doing that. Appreciate it for, people that just want to just see it and, you know, not have to play online and just, you know, wait until you come across an opponent that does it. It just seems that just seems super impractical. So I was like, you know what, 
let me just spoil myself to all these fatalities and friendships now, uh, since I know how one, I'll probably not play online that much. And two, that, uh, just want to get them out the way just so I know what they are instead of, I guess, being surprised and just <laughs> getting my money's worth in terms of it. And that's when a uh, weird gripe, I guess, maybe it could just be me, but uh, at least for PlayStation specifically, um, this is weird thing where I basically got aftermath. So in terms of this, I guess a purchasing and store standpoint, there's aftermath, which I believe is $40. And then there's aftermath plus combat pack, which includes all of the DLC. If you didn't pick any of the DLC up or get the combat pack, uh, you could, you would get now, uh, bundle with the, the, uh, aftermath. So it, it's counted as a bundle and it's like, I think 50 compared to aftermath, which is basically just $10 left less. So I do that. I uh, like, okay. Yeah. I haven't, haven't messed with any of the DLC characters before. So I was like, yeah, let me just get this bundle, catch up on all the characters, see, see their move sets and all that. So I did that, downloaded all the characters, but then the one character who was also in the campaign, mind you, uh, Shao Kahn, I can't get for some reason, uh, I'm getting hit behind a paywall that I have to still pay for him to play him. Um, so I looked on the forums. I haven't found anything conclusive yet, but maybe it's just me, I guess, but I could not, I could not play Shao Kahn without having to pay for him. So I'm not sure if that's a glitch bug, whatever, um, uh, may have to actually contact PlayStation for that. But, um, yeah, it was super weird. I'm like, He's so damn cool when I was playing him in the, uh, the campaign, but now he's not in the campaign. So like, what a damn it. I want to play with him, mess with him, see what is all of his move sets fatalities is. I saw the one, <laughs> which is pretty dope. Actually <laughs> just hitting it there. <laughs> oh man. I want to spoil it. If anybody that didn't see it, but, uh, it's great. It's great. And then his combos and using his hammer and then it's fucking, is this damn taunt is pretty dope where he legitimately taunts people consistently where you can, um, I think it buffs him somehow. I assume cause it does a cool effect on his, his, uh, at least a visual effect on him when he does it. So I don't know. So yeah, just a disclaimer. If you are on PlayStation and trying to buy it, there's maybe it's just me, but, um, or I haven't, didn't see anything that said that he's not included because I'm pretty sure they would mention that. And then I'd feel kind of ripped off because it's like it, at this point, especially like what a year after the game has come out, you should be able to uh, play with him. I know he was a pre-order bonus specifically. That's what was thinking or getting me to think that maybe he, maybe you do still need to pay for him. But I'm like, no, cause like pre-order bonuses, normally like a year or so after, or even shorter than that, you can at least still purchase after a certain like period of time. So who knows? Still kind of disappointed now that I'm thinking about it more though. Definitely going to take some action on that. But just so you know, if you uh, didn't purchase, yeah, I guess. Uh, Cause you can unlock, um, What's her name? Frost. And she, I think technically is pre-order, but you have to beat, play the game to, to unlock her at a certain chapter. I don't know, man, but you know, just putting that out there either way. So outside of that, that's pretty much all I've been up to gaming wise. Actually, I'm very surprised how much I got. I got through in that period. Um, Aftermath was not that long, actually. It was about three hours, so pretty, pretty uh, decent chunk uh, in terms of the campaign. So for people that uh, are anal about the time or how long to beat, which I do frequent now that I'm <laughs> now that you're older, you don't have necessarily all the time in the world. Uh, that's been a been a godsend. In terms of non 
outside of games, uh, at least what I've been watching uh, specifically, uh, boy, yesterday I straight up binged The Last Dance. And man, that is uh, that is such a great documentary. Um, for those that may not know, so The Last Dance is basically um, a documentary um, showing it mainly focuses on Michael Jordan, but it does also touch on basically the all-star, like one of the best teams in the NBA at the time, uh, uh, in terms of the, uh, Chicago bulls, uh, basically their whole reign in the nineties. Um, uh, basically in terms of, you know, their whole championship runs and, you know, winning what I think six championships. Yeah. Six championships roughly within that nineties period. Uh, um, it was pretty great, pretty great, man. I think they covered everything very well. They cover, I think what a lot of people talked about or, you know, just, uh, Marvel over at, in terms of what makes Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, just the greatness and legend of a basketball player. He, he was, um, yeah, it, it, it covers a lot of great stuff, a lot of cool aspects. So, you know, obviously it doesn't, it doesn't focus on sports that much, which I think, uh, why a lot of people would actually benefit from it. Like somebody like me that doesn't really follow basketball like that, but you know, even people like myself who doesn't don't follow basketball, know who Michael Jordan is. You know, there's always that one person, uh, you always know and bring, brings attention to a particular sport that, you know, you always respect and, um, you know, appreciate. And yeah, just, man, just from an inspirational standpoint, this movie, uh, hits a lot of fronts, man, just the pure drive hunger and like, um, just, uh, how do I describe it? Just like motivation to, uh, you know, be the best that he can be. Um, it's just, just, just inspiring. I ain't gonna lie. It got me emotional in some cases, just to seeing the pure, just, just, uh, initiative, you know, it just is, is crazy, especially as somebody who, who played sports and kind of get, gets that, um, aspect of it, you know, in terms of just like what it takes to play sports, the mentality you have to have and kind of what it teaches you as well in terms of just, uh, a mentality uh, being uh, at least I know all too well. And they mentioned it in the movie, in the, in the documentary a lot, uh, mental toughness and just sticking through stuff when you don't want to and all that. So yeah, from a lot of aspects, it was great to see it. Just see the, uh, uh ups and downs. Cause there was definitely a lot of that. Um, just crazy stories that were kind of more, fleshed out that, you know, you would hear at least me personally hearing on social media. Like, uh, I know the one that always came up is that like, you know, people would justify it. Like Michael Jordan, he was sick on his, uh, on his, uh, one of his playoff games. So if he was sick on his playoff games, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, so you can't do it. Well, you know, stuff like that. So, um, and it's, it's funny. They, they actually, bring light to that and actually, you know, elaborate on how that whole event happened, which is pretty interesting. Um, I guess not to spoil it, which I don't think is, this is necessarily spoiling it, but, um, in regard to that particular area, um, I guess he had, he actually had food poisoning, um, which was very suspicious and potentially intentional based off of, um, the place he ordered, which was only one of the few places that were available at the time after, uh, after the game. So I totally didn't know that it it just made it seem like he just got sick, but I didn't know that was actually what he was fighting. He was actually straight up like food poison, couldn't keep stuff up. Um, it was kind of that realm of, uh, you know, sickness and he just stuck it out, man freaking stuck it out getting, uh, he had, he had some issues like during a couple, uh, I think the first half, but he turned it on afterward and, ah, just stuff like that, man. Stuff like that, man. It's just 
was crazy. Very inspiring. And it's just like, it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, I think those, any, any uh, documentary is good where it's like, you know, what am I doing with my life? You know, it just makes, <laughs> makes you question what, what have you been doing your whole life? What are you doing? Um, yeah, man. Ugh, just the pure, just initiative drive motivation to, to win, to win, you know, taking, taking our efforts to, uh, bump his teammates up, uh, in regards to, you know, making them, making sure they actually are in the same mindset. If not, he going to hush your ass out. He going to give you a hard ass time until you want to win until you get in that mindset until you actually, you know, want to succeed, which is, it's crazy, man. Uh, I guess you don't, cause I think a lot of people don't really, you know, they see all the glory and glam and, you know, just the great player he was on the court. But then, you know, we, a lot of us, I don't think really knew how MJ was off the court, which this documentary did a great job of, of a lot of the stuff he actually was fighting during that whole season. Uh, or that whole, I guess, uh, career, uh, you know, um, with the NBA and just like, you know, <laughs> man, they, they definitely shed light in regards to how the ho- the horrible, uh, just the, the price of fame where basically having to shut up Alexa, I'm, I'm speaking, speaking truth, speaking truth right now. Um, the horrible downside of the media in regards to, you know, how people can vile people, uh, in regards to the media can get specifically with, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to spoil that. I don't want to spoil that, but basically a part in the movie where some bad happens, they flip, they flip it on Michael Jordan that he was the blame for it, which when you see it, it's, it's fucking grimy. Just how, how horrible the media can get in that aspect of just, oh, well, I get, uh, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, just to make it more interesting, it's gotta be him that did it or did whatever. And eh, it's, it's horrible, but basically like he can't even like <laughs> go outside, go, go anywhere without being flocked in like trembled and here mg can i get an autograph can i get an autograph and yeah man just seeing that angle from it is crazy that he has to deal with that on top of you know playing a great game and you know rallying his team together ah man it just gave you a, a better better found appreciation of mj uh in terms of all he went through and um all that actually happened with him actually, you know, winning those championships, uh, consistently, <laughs> which is crazy. It's very crazy. And just the weird dynamics, uh, Dennis Rodman and his antics. So they cover a lot of that too. Um, Scotty Pippen, he gets a pretty decent highlight and, you know, yeah, man, this, this documentary did a, does a great job of, uh, covering a lot of that. Uh, in on both ends as well, not trying to be one sided, but actually covering both sides of, you know, arguments and, uh, points of discussion, uh, that happened during that time period, uh, as well, which is man. Yeah. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, at least I watched it on slink. So you have to subscribe for that. Um, it said, uh, for each episode, it said it's partnered with Netflix and ESPN. So I'm assuming at some point it's going to come out on Netflix, which boy is going to be killing. It's going to be killing, uh, going to be freaking wiping up shop on Netflix. Going to definitely be top 10 when that premieres. If it, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Cause I doubt Netflix would just associate itself with that series and not do anything with it. So I assume that it's going to be a period where it'll be exclusive to ESPN, the channel, or I guess maybe it'll maybe syndicate a couple runs. And then I think come to Netflix for people to access and binge the hell out of. Cause man, 
It's a great documentary. It's it's great, man. Uh, yeah, definitely one of the better documentaries I've I've watched in a while. I guess I guess compared to Tiger King, which is pretty good too. But yeah, this is twenty twenty is the year of uh, documentaries for sure, man. Um, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, I'm very stunned by how great that uh last dance. Great documentary. I highly recommend it. Just you don't even have to. Obviously, for me, that is, um, that's not a big basketball fan. I definitely recommend uh, the Last Dance. It's it, just a great lesson overall, and um, you know what it takes to win in a lot of areas. I mean, yeah, you can actually apply it in a lot of ways, uh, which I think is could be beneficial too. So, ah, man. Yeah. I'm still reflecting on it. How great, how great it was as a whole, uh, just the whole story of, uh, yeah, his, uh, they cover a lot of his upbringings and stuff like that too. Kind of him growing up, like kind of, uh, just getting the mindset of kind of how he came to be what he came to be, especially the team, how that all came. Ah, they did a really good job. They really did. They really, really did. Um, yeah. If you just, you just want to be inspired, I'd say last dance, just, just overall good, good series. Uh, the last dance for sure. 10 episodes each. Yeah. Pretty much an hour. I was watching it on sling. So I kept getting commercials, which is annoying. So you may be, may want to wait until it comes on Netflix where it's way more easily accessible and not having to deal with like consistent commercials. And then, um, I may, maybe it's how I'm viewing it, but with sling, it forced you to watch the commercials and you couldn't skip regardless. You had to watch it. I guess that's how on demand works with cable though. No, I think you can kind of fast forward and rewind. I'm not sure, but maybe I got the bad in a deal, but I think, yeah, ESPN's network, uh, sling TV. If you have that, um, those, I think are the only ones currently, but I'm pretty certain considering that. Yeah. When, when the, when it, uh, when the sh- each episode started, it said an association with Netflix and ESPN, yeah, that it's got to come to Netflix at some point. So yeah, if you want to hold out, sure, man, it's, it's a great series. Great, 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 great documentary. So, um, yeah, I think that covered everything for, uh, episode 58 of switch of sites. Uh, if you, uh, like the show, like what you're listening to, uh, feel free to like rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, good or bad. Any feedbacks appreciated on your popular podcast and platforms. Um, you can also catch me on Twitter at a switch where I just (laughs) tweet dumb stuff. At least currently I have been, you know, with the current initiative, a lot of, uh, you know, um, black Lives matter content and, definitely beneficial stuff that I feel is, um, good for people to know and be aware of that. Maybe they aren't or weren't aware of before. Um, what else? And also catch me on Twitch TV slash a switch where I do stream each episode of this podcast live for your amusement, I guess. Um, also I do upload them a uh, day after the youtube.com slash a switch where, uh, you can also view them once they expire on a Twitch. um, yeah, I do. I may plan to stream at some point. I don't know. Yeah. Just this week is if any, uh, past two weeks, I guess, technically just been heavy just with this whole situation, man. But um, I think I'm starting to get a little bit of better spirits where I may be, uh, up to, um, start, uh, streaming. So 
back to streaming, if anything. So who knows? Maybe uh, I think I'm starting to get the Resident Evil itch again, where I might uh, start bringing it back to um, Outbreak and Resistance. I don't know. I'm still uncertain about Resistance. So what I'm probably do, <laughs> probably stream some Resistance, get annoyed and disappointed. And then that's going to get me to drive myself to play more Outbreak. Um, who knows? Something like that may happen uh, this weekend. We'll see. Um, what else? Uh, I think that is it. Oh, yeah. If you have any questions you'd like to submit to the show, feel free to submit them at a switch TV at gmail.com. Uh, if I happen to get enough, may start doing that, uh, dedicate a segment to that. Um, I think that's it. That's it. Um, but yeah, guys, I mean, of course be safe. If you are protesting, uh, definitely, um, get some water, be hydrated. Uh, food if you can, um, get, uh, especially how they acting out these days, gas mask or some form of covering or <laughs> like the one dude, get a, uh, get, get you a windblower just in case <laughs> that's ingenious. Actually, I, you can't be mad at that where, uh, it was this one video going around where, um, police, uh, were throwing, uh, tear gas and, uh, this one guy just had a straight up wind blower, just started blowing it directly in their face <laughs> in opposite direction. Uh, you got to respect it. You got to respect it. There's, there's no, it's no other, another option just to respect it. <laughs> if I was a police officer, I'd be like, you know what? Ah, hey guys, let's, let's just, let's just wrap it up. Let's just go back. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's stop this. Let's guys come on now. <laughs> when the gas is getting to their face, they're like, uh, is, uh, is violence really the answer? Um, yeah, man, we're bad people. We should probably stop. Yeah, no. <laughs> ah, yeah, that, that is hilarious, man. Uh, that, that, that gets me, but yeah, man, uh, be safe. Uh, especially now with this situation going on, it's like, I don't even know. I feel like police might be more, more, uh, uh, you know, unlawful you know, ironically. So yeah, man, especially if you're, if you're black, be safe, man. Cause, uh, you never know. You never know. I could be walking, minding my business one day. And just because I look, look suspicious, be, uh, be gone which is just the thought of that is just disappointing, man. Just because of what I look like is messed up. <laughs> what doesn't make it any better now is that, uh, I, I now got a straight up official face mask that looks straight up like sub zero. <laughs> I guess I kind of, I know I said I wanted one and I, I, I guess I kind of did. Uh, so now I look like I'm just a big black man with a sub zero mask on walking in public. Uh, you know, which is sad. Now that I think about it, it's like people won't think I'm maybe protesting. Now there's that whole factor, which is totally understandable, legitimate, uh, nothing against that at all. But you know, ah, uh, you, you just get tired sometimes. And I don't think I really touched on this, you know, maybe my side of being, um, black <laughs> in, uh, in America, I've definitely been profiled a lot. Uh, there was actually one scenario where I got straight up frisks. Uh, they straight up like, uh, I could tell you real quick. I was on a bus stop. Uh, this was a long time ago. I was super young. This was like during high school. I was on a, I was at a bus stop and what was I doing? I was, uh, yeah, I was, I, I got from work and basically, uh, there was a bus route that takes me from work to home. So, you know, I was just waiting for the next bus. And then what do you know? This cop car pulls up while I'm just waiting it, not doing anything, just chilling at the bus stop. And, you know, they, they said, uh, they said something I forgot. It wasn't 
it wasn't like out of line, but they like, I think the concerning part was they just straight up like put my hands behind my back and like was straight about to cuff me. They actually did, I think. And then just being totally invasive, just went all in my pockets and stuff, took out, took out my uh, phone and, uh, you know, they interrogated me like, who's, uh, who's your contact, who's your first contact or whatever. And, you know, fortunately I knew because it's my damn phone, I'm not no criminal that you think I am. And, uh, also <laughs> it's funny. Cause like I used to, used to be a dishwasher, uh, at, uh, old country buffet. Um, so basically there, uh, you know, to pass the time, help pass the time, I'd be jamming and busting them dishes, you know, just jamming, busting them dishes. And, uh, yeah. So what I would do to protect my, my MP3 player, which I would use, I put in a, a baggie, which I guess looks somewhat like a weed, I guess from a distance if you were, but you know, they were checking that and suspecting that. And, and you know, it was all bad, but you know, after the fact they were like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. You're not the person. And they just, they straight up just left. Didn't say sorry, nothing just left. Like, all right. Okay. So just based off that, I could have been straight up arrested for just, just looking black. You know what I mean? It's, it's sad, man. It really is. So I could definitely identify with just how crazy it can be. Um, been pulled over for being black. I mean, you know, they'll justify and say it's some one off reason. Oh yeah. You're <laughs> the ho most horrible reason I got was, oh yeah. Your tailpipe is smoking. Okay. So I was pulled over because my tailpipe is smoking. Are you serious? <sighs> but I digress. So yeah, man, I mean, it's real. It's really real. I mean, it's, it's always been in the back of my head, but you know, you just, uh, try to block it out. But I mean, obviously you just can't, it's uh it's always apparent. Um, whenever I, I'd, I'd walk from, uh, the gym, which is pretty close. Uh, I'd normally would just take the long way just to get more exercise. And you know, there's the police office and it's like, now it's like, I'm just going to straight avoid that just by just, you know, being black that I, I, I fear going to the police department, walking by it, not even going in it or anything, just walking by it, which is, is something I shouldn't have to do, man. I shouldn't have to, um, try to speed past somebody, uh, walking, uh, that's uh white just out of fear that they're, they're going to think I'm going to do something, you know? It's a, uh, it's, it's a harsh reality that, you know, I think, yeah, everybody, everybody has that's black that's been through, you know, and of course people of other color as well. Um, but man, yeah, somebody of a, a different, yeah, I can't even. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be discriminated for your color, man. It's, it's plain and simple, really. I mean, could judge somebody from their character, but just, just because they're black, you shouldn't put them in a box just because they're black, you know, it's sad, man. And it always gets to me. It's what's been getting to me this whole week and last week as well. It's just real unfortunate that racism is still a thing. You know, you don't like me because I'm black. You know, I just, it's unfortunate. It really is. It really is. Either way, let me get out my, uh, my, uh, press of state, but yeah, man, uh, definitely rest in peace to, uh, George, uh, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, um, Brianna Taylor, um, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland. I mean, it is sad. It's so many people, man. And on top of that, 
not even documented. It's a lot of this. That's probably more than like, of course, for sure happening that we don't even know about. So there's like probably a lot of George Floyd's we don't even know about that this is happening to, and they can't, they don't have that luxury. Um, they, they're dead now and their killers are just scot free, free to roam and, and do it to the next black person, which is, uh, it's unfortunate, man. It really is. It's, it's messed up. It's messed up land of the free, right? Home of the brave, but either way, um, thanks for watching guys. Uh, don't cough. <laughs> um, yeah, man, got coronavirus, murder hornets, been rumors of Ebola. Now there's a, uh, you know, well, it's always been there, but at least, you know, kind of a, a good reminder police brutality and is, is there any hope? I don't know. I'll keep the hope alive though. Um, yeah, guys till next time get your game on. Oh yeah.